I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said it was a shame They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high And left me there on a cross to die Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black it's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he They cut me down and I leapt up high I am the life that'll never, never die I'll live in you and you'll live in me I am the Lord of the dance, said he Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Almighty God, we come before you today with songs of celebration on our lips and joy in our hearts. For although Jesus did no wrong, he died on the cross for us so that we might be forgiven. His friends laid him in the tomb and grieved for him. But on the third day, he rose again, and now he is alive forever. Lord, this Easter time, we praise you and give you thanks. Amen. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped round Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead.
and it's not been a good day. We thought we had got rid of that troublemaker Jesus, but now we hear that his body's gone and he's been seen alive. The guards at this tomb gave us some story about angels moving the stone and Jesus being alive. We can't have that. Don't tell anyone, but we bribed the guards to say they were asleep and the disciples stole the body in the dead of night. Can't have this story about Jesus being alive get out. Oh, I hope this doesn't come to anything and this Jesus nonsense just fades away. I hear the tomb of Jesus has been found empty. Well, it's nothing to do with me. Some local squabbling amongst the Jews. What an argumentative lot. I wash my hands of the whole business, and I hope that's the last we hear of this Jesus fellow. Bit of a radical troublemaker, I think. But I didn't consider he needed to die. Still, it kept those temple people quiet. There's an odd rumour that the tomb where the body of Jesus laid has been found empty. Whatever's it all about. You know, I've done loads of these crucifixions. Got to keep the locals under control, haven't we? But this one was different. It went all dark for three hours. And I heard that the temple curtain had been ripped in two. And then Jesus on the cross said, Father, into my hand, into your hands I place my spirit. And then he died. It was awful. Deep down, I thought he was a good man. I could see that. Unlike the onlookers on that first Easter morning, we have the benefit of nearly 2,000 years of hindsight and the rest of the Bible. It helps us make more sense of what actually happened and what actually changed. Years before Jesus' life on earth, when Adam and Eve were walking around the Garden of Eden, they could um, walk and talk and spend time with God. But then they broke the agreement that they had, and they had to leave. And something was broken in their relationship with God, with God and in our connection to God. And throughout the story of the Old Testament, we see the connection being re-established in ways that require repeating. They have to be done again. But when Jesus died on the cross, he offers this way to be connected to God. He repairs the connection permanently for anyone who believes in him and chooses to follow. We can have that connection to God through Jesus. Mary, who Jesus appeared to, wasn't Mary, Jesus' mum. She was a lady that Jesus had met on his travels when Mary was in a really dark place. You can read about that at the beginning of Luke 8. But what's so amazing about this is that Jesus still includes people who have done things in their past that might disqualify them, might seem to disqualify them. He doesn't just give Mary a job, but he knows her by name and he loves her. He affirms her and you, and he loves you pers personally. This invitation to follow is not an invitation to follow rules, but an invitation to a relationship with a living God. Let us pray. Lord, there are always so many things to pray for, but at Easter, in particular, let us pray for life renewed. We pray for those who have been seriously ill with Covid, and who despaired of seeing or living through the joys of spring again. We pray for those who are grieving a loved one, and ask that you be alongside them as they start to rebuild their life anew. We pray for those who, during this pandemic, have started to explore the Christian faith online or began to pray or are seeking you in some other way and we ask that you guide them to discover more and live a new life in Jesus. We pray for those with established faith who are looking to find new ways of living a Christian life and new ways of showing that life to others. Amen.
Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she went over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Friday night when we placed the body of Jesus in the tomb but we only had time to wrap him in grave clothes so I came back really early this morning to apply spices and perfumes and then I saw the stone had been moved away from the entrance I went in and Jesus was, had gone I was shocked really upset I went and found Peter and John and they came and looked into the empty tomb Peter and John went off, lost in their own thoughts, leaving me behind. And then the most marvellous thing happened. I turned around and there was one of the gardeners. He asked, why are you crying? And I told him and he just replied, Mary. I just knew it was Jesus. He wasn't dead. I knew he was alive. He told me to go and tell the others. I couldn't wait. I rushed off so excited I could hardly blurt the news out. Isn't it marvellous? I was shocked when Mary came and told us the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive and had actually talked to her and that we will see him again. I knew Mary was going early to the tomb to apply spices and perfumes, so me and John ran to the tomb as fast as we could. John's faster than me and got there first, but he stopped outside. Blew that, I thought. I marched straight in. Mary was right. The tomb was empty. The grave clothes had been rolled up neatly, but Jesus was gone. We really didn't know what to make of it. Somehow, I felt it was hopeful, though. When Mary came back telling us the tomb was empty and that Jesus had been raised, I began to think about what Jesus had said. We went to the tomb. Peter went in first and I followed. The body couldn't have been stolen because the grave clothes were still there. I understood then what Jesus had told us about him rising again. I know Jesus said this would happen, but I'm not sure we understood him at the time. I now believe he is risen indeed, and I am so looking forward with hope to seeing him again. Jesus really did rise from the dead. He wasn't a ghost or wasn't some strange experience or even a dream, because the people that lived at the time had a language for those experiences, and they aren't the word they used to tell us what happened. Jesus was there in physical form and his body had been made new he didn't look like he was just a horrible corpse or something and he was recognizable as jesus 
but he didn't. He did look slightly different as Mary mistaked him as a gardener. It gives us an idea of the hope we have for the future. Their last book in the Bible is called the Book of Revelation, and the writer John put it like this. John sees a new heaven and a new earth and a loud voice saying, Behold, the place of God is with people. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear away from their eyes and death will be no more. Ne neither shall there be any mourning, no crying, no pain, any more for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all the things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So our hope for the future is earth and heaven back together, God himself with us. And just like Jesus, we'll be recognisable but made new and there'll be no more sadness. What an exciting future. 
but the cross and the empty tomb alters our today as well. We have Jesus as our permanent link with God and the Holy Spirit always with us. It also means we have work to do for God's kingdom on earth. Each day as we go about our daily lives, we need to look for ways to act justly, be compassionate, kind and loving to those around us. Before we finish, I want to tell you about the next few days of Jesus's life after the tomb. He continues to appear to his disciples in different places, but Thomas, long-term friend and disciple, keeps missing him. Thomas heard Jesus say plenty of times that he was going to die and then be raised again. But still, he says, until I see it with my own eyes, I'm not going to believe. Eight days later, Thomas sees Jesus and rather than Jesus telling Thomas off and feeling let down or disappointed by Thomas, not believing what he'd been told so many times, Jesus lets Thomas touch the scars the cross made. Jesus wasn't afraid of Thomas's doubts and neither is he afraid of our doubts or questions and neither will he be disappointed. You're invited to meet us back at the chapel. We're meeting again on Sundays. We're going to be altering the time so there's going to be some early mornings, some evenings. So hopefully there'll be a time you can make and join us. Keep an eye on our social media and our website and we'll update it with what times things are going to happen. Or continue to enjoy watching our videos as we explore questions, doubts, learn more about the God who loves us and what it means to be part of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. God bless and happy Easter.